What up, man? You know what it is. Your boy, Trent Set of Sense. And of course, this is Chosen Journey. And uh, I had to bring one of my brothers, man. Um, he, you know, he's, he's slightly a mentor to me, even though, <laughs> you know, we like the same age. I think you might be, even be a little younger than me. Well, we mentor each other. Okay, there you go. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Um, man, this dude, like, you know, in... This new path that I've been on in the Chosen Journey path, man, you have been one of the most instrumental people in my life. Wow. Um, you know that, man. Man, you know I'm that. just I'm just honored. Like <laughs> it was a, I had so many people from Richard Dunn to uh, Pierre Medor. Yeah, yeah. Pierre, like, shout out my man Pierre. You know, you gotta yeah. connect with sense. Yeah. And yeah. well, can I tell this story now or should I wait? Well, can I introduce uh, yeah, you first? Uh, please, please. <laughs> this brother right here, uh Sam Collier. Right? <laughs> but hold on, I gotta break down the resume. I wow. mean, label executive, podcaster, author, lead pastor of now CCC Atlanta, formerly Story Church. Mm. Uh the list goes on and on and on. Um he 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 stretches nationally. Um there's so much that you have going on. I'm very fortunate. To have you as my brother, man, and it's an honor to for you to finally come to this platform. Yeah. Lead pastor, CCC Atlanta, Sam Collier. Since. What's up, brother? Man, it's an honor to be here. Listen, this show, <laughs> I can't believe I even made it on the show. I mean, it's like pe how? people how? are how was it? How? from Kirk to Yolanda. To oh, Kirk, look at it. Right? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> T.I. T.I. Yep. Priscilla. Yep. Priscilla Shire. Shout out my man, D1. Bro, this show is out, it's on fire. Thank you, bro. It's Thank on you. fire. People are talking about it all in the streets. It's in the streets. Wow. It's in the streets. So it's an honor to be here with you, man. You know, you know how I feel about you. And yeah. I can I can I tell my story tell now? Your story now. It's gonna be quick. <laughs> we reconnected when this year? Was it this year or last year? Um it was like spring, like spring. Like uh, sp still this year. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, this year. And um I think it might have been your first time meeting me for real, for real. It was, yeah, yeah. But I met you. Yeah, we talked about it. Almost yeah. 10 years ago, maybe a little over 10 years ago, when I was just trying to get on. I was doing music. I was doing, trying to do radio, trying to do what you do. <laughs> and this is during the affiliates era. Right, right. And, you know, I, loving God, loving Jesus, mm -hmm. but, tr but trying to figure out how to navigate this industry. Mm. And shout out to Edward Long and some other folks. My brother Ed. And yes, I, I remember him saying, look, you got to go meet Sense. Yeah. And you walked me through the whole studio when you were on satellite radio and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Now you're all over the place. <laughs> um, but, man, I, all I remember is at that time, and you're still, now you're, like, doing this. At that time, you were here. Okay. Um, like It's the same, different side of the track, but still it's bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just remember how humble. I was like, man, I can't believe somebody with this much influence and stature <laughs> would take time to to show somebody. I mean, nobody knew me at the time to just show me around. Bro, you were kind. You were nice. You knew I was a Christian. <laughs> and people that were at your level at that time, it was kind of like, oh, you're the Christian God, you know. So for you to do that, mm. it was just unheard of. And I never forgot it. Wow. So when they brought your name up again, I said, I got to reconnect with sense. Man. So. And, and, and then, like, now, man, you know, I... I mean, we talk almost every other day now. I know, so. I know. And and, I know. and it's crazy because, you know, my brother is here, but, like, he's responsible for so many things, mm. you know. And diving into it, man, like, how do you balance, like, running an entire church? Um, you're so active in the community. Um, and... I, I watch you, man. We go and we have lunches, and yeah. you're a dot connector mm. on, on a major level. Mm. Major, major level, man. Do you ever think about, like, the balance of, of, of how you navigate that? Wow, man. You know, it's I think for me, um, you know, I, I've been through some hard times over the past few years, and now I'm in a, in a season where God is shifting, rebuilding. Shout yeah. out to Dr. A.R. Bernard for yeah. my covering spiritual father, He's mm. helping to reshape me, mm. refashion me, all of the things. But early on in my life, um, I, think, I believe it was Andy Stanley okay. that talked to me, who was Charles Stanley's son, who talked to me about being in um, multiple places at once. You got to build a team. Okay. 
if you want to be in every place at one time. Yeah. And so I, that, that's one of the places that I learned that because he had so many different verticals happening in his life as well as capacity. I think capacity has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. But um, he, he really, I, one of the things I used to just ask, I was asked the same question. How are you running this 40,000 person church <laughs> and these conferences and these, you got like 80 books and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. And he's, you know, and I actually, it was a, it's a, the age old adage from Chick-fil-A leadership, high performance teams do high performance things. Mm. And so I learned early on, if I wanted to do a lot, I wouldn't be able to do it just by myself. I was going to have to build a team around me of high capacity leaders inspire them, love on them, take care of them, wow. and you'll be able to do a lot. Wow. Sam Collier is here, lead pastor, CCC Atlanta. Um, I want to dive more into, like, leadership, man. And, uh, you know, we did in a community event uh, with the Boys and Girls Club yeah. in Atlanta. And, you know, and, you know, and moving around with you, there was one thing that I always noticed, um, especially – with you as a leader is that you will connect different leaders mm. in the room and you'll put them in the room and different yeah. things will evolve <laughs> like branches. Like you have right. this a bit like, you know, this God given ability where like the branches grow, bro. You know, I, I am a living testimony of that. Um, there are times when you, you know, you'll call me just randomly like, have you thought about this? Mm. And I'm like, man, you're right. You know, like, I mean, I can give you a perfect example. We were at the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> yeah. And T.I. Um, dropped a song with Young Dro and Kirk Franklin. Yeah. And you said, you said, bro, did you listen to the T.I. song? You need to call him right now and have him on your show. You're a trendsetter sense. You need to have that. Mm. And I was like, and I called them. And they, they were like, yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there Monday. <laughs> then you see that little seed? Yeah. Um, And... Just that ability of your environment, your work environment, and and your friends, and how pouring into somebody, what it does, man, and that's just a blessing. And I I, I really commend you um, for that. So I just you know well I to <laughs> well I mean you know I, I think for me bro it's like you know coming out of uh, a season right you know, I, one of the things that I've learned um, and that a lot of mentors taught me over the years is you know, you sow what you want to reap. You know, you sow. If you want love, you got to sow love. You want kindness, you got to sow kindness. You want belief, you got to sow belief. And so for me, I think it was John Maxwell that said, if you make your life about lifting others up, you'll automatically be lifted up. Mm. And so that that that's what it was about for me. And I think, you know, everybody has their gift. Everybody has their unique grace that's on their life to do unique things. One of the things that I believe the Lord has given me, and it, and it started when I was around 17 or 18, I noticed I just started ending up in a lot of rooms with all of these influencers, and I kept asking, God, how do I keep ending up? I would go into an organization and end up at the top with, or somewhere in a room with the top guy. I'm like, what is what is happening? Right, and right, yeah. I, at first I thought it was me, and the Lord said, no, I am putting you in these rooms mm -hmm so that you can open doors for others, so that you can help connect dots, all of these things. And the moment you stop helping others, the moment you stop connecting the dots for others, I'm going to take you out of the rooms. Mm. And so for me, I've known, you know, from an early age um, that that was a part of my gift, yeah. helping people connect the dots. If I never got paid again to do one thing, that one thing that I would do was help people discover who they are and get positioned in that, in that space. Wow. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have uh, my brother, pastor, lead pastor, CCC Atlanta, Sam Collier. And I want to dive into it. You know, um, I've been going to, you know, your services the past couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> and one of the things that, you know, when you had Dr. Bernard down and you were speaking and there was a there was this topic that you guys were talking about. And it was about the season and um the, the the moment and pouring into your brother and mm. you went through a transition where you had Story Church Atlanta and then all of a sudden everything just changed and for those that don't know uh, Sam uh, has 
partnered with one of the most respected theological minds in uh, the theological community, Dr. A.R. A. Bernard, and, you know, he's become a mentor of yours, and yeah. I kind of want you to just tell this story, man, because it's so <laughs> impactful, yeah. um, and being a, I'm, I'm sitting there right next to you um, and just watching it unfold, and it, it's a beautiful thing, man. If you could kind of just break that down. Yeah, man, you know, um, up until about three or four years ago, my life and career was, was kind of up and to the right, mm. up and to the right. And that's kind of a business term for like trajectory. Like, and, um, and so I planted a church within that. Um, I was uh, Hillsong Atlanta was the church. And then Hillsong went through its own set of challenges, kind of global challenges, documentaries and all of these things. And I, I sort of got stuck in kind of the middle of that. Mm. And so transitioning the church out of that into Story Church, uh, Story Church began to evolve and become and then I went through a divorce. Mm. And if you know any pastors or ministry, you know, leaders that go through divorces, it's not sexy. Mm. Um, and it can be debilitating right. for a ministry. It can be debilitating for your brand. It can be debilitating for your impact. And so for me, coming out of a divorce, it obviously um, was, was um, challenging for the church as well to walk through. Mm. I sort of got to a point where I said, I think I'm done. I think three years in or three years of just challenge, three years of pressure, three years of being at the lowest of the lows. Mm. My therapist kind of uh, related to it this way. He said, the problem is you're in a dilapidated house and you keep fixing one room. And then as soon as you fix that room, you realize there's mo more mold in the other room. Mm. And you need to determine whether or not the house is worth saving. Mm. And so for me, as I was going through that, I, I honestly made the decision to be done with ministry. I said, wow. you know what? It's too much. It's too hard. I'll start over. It's been too much. I've let people down, all of these things. Th these are thoughts you have in your mind and in your heart, mm. having gone through a divorce and other challenges. And the week that I was getting ready to announce to the church, hey, we're going to shut the doors, I got a call from uh, Dr. Jamal. I mean, I'm sorry, Dr. Bernard's son, Jamal mm. Bernard who said, we've been watching you for the last few years. And the first thing he said to me was, I'm sorry we didn't come down earlier. Wow. And from our conversation, he took me to his dad. His dad spoke to me. And the conversation was just filled with a ton of accountability, mm. inspiration, encouragement, and, and resulted in an idea of a covering, that they would step in. Um, and it was as if God was saying, I know you might be done, but I'm not done with your story. Wow. And so here I am. Wow. Crazy, man. <laughs> it's, it really is a miraculous story. Um, so now here we are, Story Atlanta, the transition into the Christian Cultural Center uh, based out of Brooklyn, which has many campuses nationally. Yeah. Um, talk, walk us through it, man. Here, it, You know, the transition... Um, you guys just started last week. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> now we have CCC Atlanta. Yeah. Tell us the direction and, and, and the vision behind that. Yeah. You know, I love the story that Dr. Bernard shares about how the name came to be Christian Cultural Center. Mm -hmm. And he talks about, um, I believe it was the governor at the time who I believe might have been Jewish. Um, and they got rid of the office um, for clergy in that in New York. Mm. And um, as he was going down that path and having that dialogue, he kind of inquired, now why, why get rid of the clergy office? I see the Jewish office has been maintained. The Islam office has been maintained. Mm. Um, why take down the Christian space? He's, and the governor, I believe, said to him, well, um, the Jewish faith is a culture. Islam is a culture. Christianity is just a religion. Mm. And it was out of that revelation that he said, he went on a theological study and said, no, Christianity is more than a religion. It is a way of life. Mm. It is a culture. This is where we get the idea of kingdom 
culture, right? Heaven coming down to earth, us remaking the world, being a light to those in darkness, mm. a salt, the salt of the earth. To do that means to take the kingdom culture and infuse our everyday culture into society uh. um, that Christ um, and, and the principles of Christ. I mean, we saw this with Dr. King. This is where we get the idea of nonviolent resistance and the whole civil rights movement kind of led by Dr. King in that moment, founded in Christian principles because Christianity is a culture. And so as we look towards Christian Cultural Center Atlanta, CCC Atlanta, mm -hmm. the idea is to build a Christian culture. Okay. Is to do our best to empower individuals to remake the world around them, and for those that are calling our church home, um, that that there would be a culture that they would be a part of that um, enlist a certain amount of values and beliefs and uh, and shared goals. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And oh. I just want to hang with you as much as I can. Man, get out of here. <laughs> so. You know, you have been so involved in the community. Um, what things can we expect from a community standpoint? Yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, because we're speaking about the culture and stuff like that. So I just yeah. kind of wanted to get your take on that. Man, 100%, you know, um, I, I share it with you, and we did some events together. Right, right, we're right. We're going to do more. I've been blessed with the opportunity of being on the board, um, the Stewardship Council and Committee and mm. Board, of the Boys and Girls Club of Metro Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And it represents about 20 clubs, about 2,000 kids all around the city. Man, it's, we're a few weeks out from Thanksgiving. Right. And so every year we try to give away at least 300 turkeys wow. and meals to families that are in need. I'll give you one story. Um, we, we did an outreach uh, last year. And, you know, the Boys and Girls Club is positioned and fashioned in a part of the city where – there are individuals that are in need, mm -hmm. um, the marginalized. That's where they place boys and girls clubs. And I remember we had uh, so many individuals driving up in their cars, and they were coming around, and we were putting the turkeys in the back and the this, and, oh, we need three turkeys, we need five. And there was this, um, this, this kind of lowly white man that walks up with a, um, what do you call it? It's a, is it when you move into a house and you put a couch on it, I believe it was just kind of like a little shelf on wheels. Mm. And he rolls his card up, and we're like, we're like, where's your car? He said, I don't have a car. I just came to get food. Mm. He walked there, and we loaded turkeys into, um, into his buggy, mm. and he went home. These are the types of individuals that we want to serve. Jesus' Bible is clear that we should serve the poor and the widows. And so that's what we want to do, man. We want to get out into the community and love on kids. We're going to be doing a lot of partnerships with the Boys and Girls Club. Absolutely. Christmas is coming up, mm -hmm. right, as well as uh, Thanksgiving, back-to-school bashes, and anything that we can do to, to, again, take this culture of Christianity to the world. Ah, Sam Collier is here, um, lead pastor, CCC Atlanta. What uh, salvation... Excuse me. What scripture? Yeah. I didn't even get to the salvation Ooh. yet because you know we're going to get there. <laughs> um, what scripture resonates with Sam Collier right now? Wow. See, you didn't prepare me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, man. You know, I've been dealing with um, fear mm. lately. Really? Um, yeah, just... Stepping into a new world, you know, I share it with you yeah. offline. This is really besides, shout out to Darlene McCoy. Yeah. Besides her, this is like my first public wow. interview. Wow. And I had to do it with my brother. And so it was an <laughs> honor. It was just by the grace of God, just because I've been rebuilding my life mm -hmm. for the past year. Um, and so it can be a little scary. And so the, one of the scriptures that comes to mind is um, when Jesus tells Peter that he's going to deny him three times. I just preached a message about this. And the idea was, as we talk about moving into, you know, the next chapter of life and God shifting us from one thing to the next, one of the things that we encounter is God takes us from one thing to the next, one season to the next. Mm. Jesus is getting ready to down the cross. The world is getting ready to enter into a new season. Mm. Um, one of the things we're going to face is fear. Mm. 
and here Peter is, and he's like, I'm never going to deny you. <laughs> he, he says, no, you're actually going to deny me three times. He says, no. He, Peter even goes as far as to say this, all of the other disciples may deny you, mm. but I'm not. Mm. He says, no, you're actually going to be the one that denies me three times. And Jesus is on the cross. He's being beaten. He's being hung. All of these things, nails are going through his hands. Um, and, it's, and the Bible says um, that Peter is so ashamed mm. to be associated with Jesus that when the individuals come and say, hey, weren't you the guy with Jesus? The Bible actually says that he curses them out. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> He's so afraid of being seen with Jesus mm. and his reputation. And so for me, that was inspiring in a way of, man, you know what? What if Peter had been courageous? Now, we know that the prophecy was that he would deny him. But his mandate in that moment was actually to be courageous. Mm. Um, and so for me, you know, my message to our church in that time and even to me in this time is to stay focus no matter what's happening around you no matter what people are saying no matter what people are seeing um no matter what it looks like don't let fear cause you um to be different than what god has created you to be mm. peter what had had been fashioned to be excited about jesus but in a moment of fear he was ashamed mm. And so for me, that scripture is what comes to mind. You can find it in the Gospels, Matthew, right. Mark, Luke, and John. Yep. It's almost in every book. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he didn't give us the spirit of fear, but power, love, sound mind. Wow. Sam Collier is here, lead pastor, CCC Atlanta. Of course, can I pray with you? <laughs> we can did, I pray? We did one in the street. Let's do a special one, you know, salvation, um, a calling um, from the voice and the wonderful mind of my brother, Pastor Sam Collier. First of all, it's been an honor to be here, and I'm excited to do this moment. You want me to look in this camera? That's Can right. I do that one? That's, that's right. <sighs> Can I pray with you? Can I pray? <laughs> <laughs> um, the Bible says in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, mm. but I have come that you would have life and you would have it more abundantly. When you really get into the Greek of the meaning of abundantly in that particular moment, it actually translates to the advantage. Jesus says, I've come that you would have life, not death, but have life, but also to the advantage, that you would have an advantage in this life against the schemes of the enemy, against the pressures of life. There is a life available that's not perfect, um, but that is rooted in Christ. I always say this, uh, Jesus hasn't promised us a life of perfection, but that he be with us in the imperfection. Following Jesus changes your life, and it also makes your life better. When you submit yourself to his principles of love and peace and kindness, you attract these things into your life. I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly, and the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Let me pray. God, we thank you today for life. We thank you for an advantage that we do not have to be a victim of our circumstances, but that we could reimagine our circumstances through your principles. There, there's somebody out there right now experiencing death. We know that the Bible says that the wages of sin um, is death. And listen, nobody's perfect. All of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short. But somebody may have found themselves in the result of sin now, a, a, a broken marriage, a, a broken friendship, a, um, lack and debt and hardship, a circle that you're in, depression that maybe your sin has gotten you into. I, I just want to encourage you now, if you give your life to Jesus, if you give your life to Jesus, it doesn't mean that you'll be void of sin, but that your sin would be forgiven and he would teach you how not to sin, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. God loves you. He loves us. He loves the world, and he has a plan for you. This is my prayer, that you would come closer to him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That was so powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my brother, Sam Collier. Before you go, yeah. let him know everything, man, because you, you're an author. You have your podcast, CCC Atlanta, <laughs> just let them know everything that's going on. 
100%. Listen, let's stay connected on Instagram at Sam Collier, S A M C O L L I E R. Facebook, Sam Collier TV. And if you have um, the Apple Podcast app, Spotify, or, or if you're a podcast fan, I want you to type in the narrative with Sam Collier. Shout out to American Urban Radio Networks. Um, and let's check it out. And when you get there, the first episode you have to listen to is with DJ Sense. <laughs> <laughs> so check me out, follow me, and let's stay connected. Lead pastor, CCC Atlanta, Sam Collier, trendsetter sense, says chosen journey.